Lord, we ask you that you would open our ears that we may hear your voice today. Amen. I just want to say that it is an honor and a privilege for me to stand here before you almost every Sunday for the last eight years. It's been, it's been a, an experience of a lifetime for me. And I do appreciate it. And I appreciate every one of you uh, that has made this eight years very, very meaningful for me. And I will continue to do what I can to further this church. And go ahead. Thank you so much. I got a few verses of scripture I want to read this morning from the book of 1 Kings, the third chapter, verses 5 through 12. At Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father, David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child, and I do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count, or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong, for who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this, so God said to him, Since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth or for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been, never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of those words from the Old Testament this morning. There was a little boy scared of the dark. Anybody ever been scared of the dark? This kid was scared of the dark. He was about five or six years old. And one night his mother said, she, he said, would you please go out on the back porch and get me my broom? And the little boy said, mommy, it's dark out there and I'm scared of the dark. And she said, oh, you don't have to be afraid of the dark. She said, Jesus is out there and he'll take care of you and he'll watch over you. And he said, are you sure Jesus is out there? She said, yes, of course I know he's out there. He'll take care of you. It's not, a, it's not a problem. And so he goes over to the back door and he cracks it just a little bit, you know. And he looks out into the dark and he says, Jesus, if you're out there, would you please hand me the broom? <laughs> Have you ever been in a situation so challenging that you didn't know what to do. Very few things will make you feel more alone than facing down a challenge that is greater than your resources, greater than what you feel that you can handle. And I'm describing almost every sleepless night you have ever had. Am I right? I know I am. There's a young man named Alex Honnold. He's, sport, he's famous in the sports world for his free solo climbing. Free solo climbers don't use any ropes or harnesses or any other equipment in their climbing. Only the most fearless, disciplined climbers attempt this feat. In September of 2008, Honnold was climbing what they call Half Dome. It's a rock wall in Yosemite National Park. A filmmaker documented his climb in a, in a short film titled, Alone on the Wall. 
Half Dome is a 2,000 foot rock formation with a, a sheer face. It's just sheer. It's dangerous for climbers who are using traditional gear like ropes and harnesses. It's dangerous for them. For a free solo climber, it's an insane, death-defying challenge. But about 1,800 feet up the side of Half Dome is a very thin, flat granite surface. Very thin, very small. Climbers call it the Thank God Ledge. It's, a, it's one of the only surfaces along the climbing route where a climber can get a solid foothold or even rest for a minute before continuing to the top of Half Dome. That day, Honnold made it to Thank God Ledge, but then he froze. He was all alone on this lip of the granite hill. 1,800 feet above the valley floor. He looked at the sheer rock surface around him and he didn't find a good foothold. If he didn't find a good foothold or his fingers slipped just a little bit as he reached for the next crevice, he would fall 1,800 feet to the ground. And for the first time in his climbing career, Alex Honnold was afraid. This is a world-class climber, one of the only a few handful of people in the world who makes the risky climbs that he does. Neuroscientists have run tests and functional MRIs on him to study his brain, how his brain processes fear, and they found out that his brain does not process fear. Alex Honnold just doesn't feel a fear. He doesn't feel fear, except for a rare moment like this day on Thank God Ledge when he froze and couldn't move. For five long minutes, he stood on Thank God Ledge struggling to get his fear under control and figure out his very next move. With his legs cramping, he leaned forward to the closest rock jutting out from Half Dome's face, and he pushed himself forward onto that tiny ledge, then grabbed for a crevice to hold on to, and he pulled himself off a thank God ledge and climbed the last 200 feet to safety. Now, it's hard to imagine how alone Alex Honnold must have felt as he stood on thank God ledge. But think about our Bible passage that I just read this morning. 1 Kings 3, it's about young king named Solomon who felt alone and ill-equipped to face the challenges of leading God's people. Solomon was the youngest son of Israel's King David. Theologians believe he was around 20 years old when he took over his father's throne. 20 years old, a mere child, really. He had power, he had authority, he had assistance, he had advisors, he had all manner of resources at his fingertips, and yet it wasn't enough. He needed more than a crown and a bunch of yes men to lead God's people. So he found himself on his own, thank God, ledge. He's alone and he's facing a massive challenge. And he found his foothold. He got his grip by calling on God for help. Solomon's story reminds us that of our own inadequacy. Our own inadequacy is God's opportunity to work through us. That's a tough lesson for us, especially in our society where we celebrate independence and rugged individualism. We all want to look like winners. We all want to have it all together like we don't need anyone else's help. But if you read the Bible, you'll see the same theme repeated over and over again. 
God chooses to do his greatest work through average people who rely on God's power to work through them. God is attracted to weakness. He can't uh, resist those who humble themselves honestly and honestly admit how desperately they need him. He just can't resist. Our weakness makes room for God's power. When Solomon admitted he had inadequacies to God, God stepped in and offered his power. Now Solomon's story also reminds us that it is impossible for us to reach our God-given potential without God's guidance. God created humans in God's image for the purpose of living in an intimate, trusting relationship with him. In our relationship with God, in their relationship with God, Adam and Eve had access to all of God's character, all of God's power, all of God's wisdom. Their lives were aligned with the will and the purposes of their creator. But you see, Solomon's request of God was an opportunity to undo the damage that Adam and Eve had done in the Garden of Eden when they sinned. Solomon asked for a discerning heart and the ability to distinguish right from wrong. Solomon is asking for a heart to listen to God, to rely on God's guidance instead of his own. Resources that he had. Solomon is asking for a second chance to walk with God, to see life through God's eyes, and to rely on God's power instead of his own. Remember, he's only 20 years old. If we had the perfect ability to listen to God and to see life through God's eyes, wouldn't it eliminate all the kinds of confusion that we have and the anxieties we have and the, the stress that we go through? Wouldn't we find meaning and joy in using our skills that we have and opportunities to glorify God? But sometime, somehow we over, by, bypass that with our fear. Finally, Solomon's story reminds us that our life is not about ourselves. It's a testament to the world of what can happen when God adds his awesome power to our average abilities. St. Teresa of Avella was a Spanish Carmelite nun who lived in the 1500s. And as she traveled all over Spain establishing new monasteries, she took with her an uneducated young woman named Anne of St. Bartholomew. After Teresa's death, Anne was promoted and given opportunities to serve that seemed to be far beyond her abilities. She felt unworthy and ill-equipped for the ministries given to her. And eventually she was promoted to a position in which she was asked to establish new Carmelite monasteries in foreign countries. And at this point, Anne knew that she was over her head. So she complained to God. She prayed to God and she complained to him. She said, Lord, can you ask all this of me? I am nothing but straw. And in prayer, Anne heard God say, Ah, but it is with straw like this that I light my fire. Because we are human and so constricted by human limits and perspectives, we forget that we are created to display the divine image of God and the actions of the kingdom of God in our human endeavors. Every action we take has eternal influences. Our only heart, daily lives are meant to be a pure and unwavering reflection of God's character and purposes, and glory. That's what we're all about. That's what we all should be about. Solomon asked for a discerning heart. 
and the knowledge to distinguish right from wrong. So that the kingdom of Israel would reflect the character and the purposes and glory of the king of kings. But sadly, like all human kings, he failed in many ways to listen and to follow God. But God never gives up on God's creation. Never. He is always ready to hear the prayer of those who ask for his wisdom. He's always listening. He's always there. In 1937, a young man named Marion Wade founded a residential cleaning and moth-proofing business. And over the next five years, he expanded his services to be, and began franchising his business. In 1944, he was badly injured when a batch of cleaning chemicals exploded. He nearly lost his eyesight. And it was during his, re his uh, recovery from his injuries that Marion turned to God for help. And in his prayer, he turned his whole life over to God. And as he later wrote in his autobiography, I don't expect miracles. I don't intend to sit back and expect you to do, run everything. But I want you to tell me how to run things and send my way the men I will need to do the job. Soon after this, some graduates from Wheaton College, a Christian college near Chicago, applied for jobs with Marion Wade's company. Two of them, men, two of the men, Kenneth Hansen and Kenneth Wisner, partnered with him to found the company we know as Service Master, a residential and commercial cleaning business based on the idea that they were using their skills to serve their master, Jesus Christ. Today, Service Master International operates throughout the United States and in eight other countries. It generates revenue of $3.5 billion a year. Marion Wade confronted his own inadequacy and he prayed that God would guide him and equip him for the challenges in front of him. And God answered that prayer more abundantly than he could ever have imagined. In the first chapter of the book of James, the half-brother of Jesus, he assures us that if anyone asks God for wisdom, God will give it to them generously, without finding fault. Wisdom and discernment are reflecting of God's character and are necessary for accomplishing God's purposes. So this prayer is always aligned with God's will. You see, when we pray to God for a listening heart, we're turning our lives over to the Creator God to use for His glory. God will add His awesome power to our average abilities, and He will accomplish through us more than we could possibly ever imagine. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, we are so human. There are so many things that we can't do, but we have given our lives to you, Lord, and we ask that you would continually guide and direct us. Give us a discerning heart that we can do the things that need to be done that you would have us to do. We leave our lives in your hands, Lord. Guide and direct us. Amen. We have God to lead us. We need to let that happen. So many times, we kind of fight it. We do not need to do that. We need to open our lives up and let God lead us. Guide and direct us. To do great things for Him, in His name. So that we might promote the kingdom of heaven. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we just ask that you would be with us in everything that we do this coming week. The things that we need to do, the things that should be done, the things that need to be done. Help us to do these things, Lord, 
be receptible to your calling and your guidance in everything that we do. And until we meet again, amen. <laughs>